last week. Man, such an incredible time. 73 people decided to dedicate their life to Christ, demonstrated by obedience, and we're going to teach you there's no better place than one to build your life. Sing this with us. Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock on which I stand.
and storms go, but we put our trust in you. In Jesus' name, meet us here, Father.
is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaking I'm sing it out I've never been more than But I put my faith in Jesus He'll never let me down He's faithful through generations So I'm here now He will God, we are so grateful God, that we can look to you and build our life on you. God, not on shifting sand, but on the rock of your word. God, we think that anytime we come into this room, we get to experience your presence. God, to be with your family and to hear from your word. So this morning, Father, as we do every single week, we want to hear your heart. We want to hear from your word. And we want to leave changed. So God, this morning I pray that you would speak to us through your word, and we will be faithful to listen for it. It's in the strong name of your son Jesus that we pray, and in one loud FCF voice, we all said, it's going to be a great morning, church. Watch, look at the person next to you and say, I'm glad I got to sit by you. You look good today. Tell them. Tell them, you look good today, baby. You look nice. Really nice. Good morning. How is everybody this morning? God is good and he is in this place, right? All right, if this is your first time, we want to welcome you. Can we welcome our guests? Yes. It's exciting. If this is your first time, we want to know if you could just fill out that card, that connect card that's in your program and drop it in the box on your way out. Or you can always go online, fcfchurch.com, tap that connect button and just give us some information about you. XO Marriage Conference, who signed up? Yes, that's exciting, it's March 3rd and 4th. You can still register for that amazing event for husbands and wives at fcfchurch.com slash events. I would like to welcome our, one of our elders, Travis McCrory. Thank you, thank you. Um, Again, my name is Travis. Uh, I am one of the elders here at FCF Church, but I also have the uh, privilege of being able to help my wife and support her, Debbie, uh, as she leads the uh, marriage and early childhood ministries. Uh, Debbie and I started coming to this church over 30 years ago, and early on we decided that we were going to give our tithes and offerings to God by giving to FCF Church. Uh, it's a decision we have never regretted. Uh, I know many of you in this room and online have also made that decision and not regret it. Uh, so at this point, we'd like to give you the opportunity to uh, give to what God is doing here at FCF Church. Uh, you can give at fcfchurch.com slash give online uh, through the app or uh, on the offering boxes in the uh, back wall and in the lobby. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to give back to you out of everything that you've given to us because we know that all we have is from you anyway. Uh, Lord, pray that you'll bless this offering, uh, use it to your service here through FCF Church and throughout the world. Uh, and Lord, as we transition to the message part of this service, I just pray that you'll uh, speak your word to us, open our hearts, Lord, have our hearts be open to not only hear what is being told to us, but to do it as well. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, FCF. We're so glad that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. My name is Pete. Most of you know that. Some of you don't if this is your first time. I have the amazing privilege of serving here as the associate pastor. And if this is your first time following service this morning, we have a room. We'd love to have the opportunity to meet you. Myself and my wife Jessica will be there. You can shake our hands, ask any questions that you have about the church. But we are so glad that you chose to join us this morning. Can we let our guests know how much we appreciate them being here? And I'm... I met somebody this morning who brought, Miss Adrian brought a guest. I love that too. Let's give it up for those people that brought guests. Be, be a bringer. So you saw, uh, what's up? Uh, I'm good, brother. My last name is Jalot. He was asking my last name. It's Jalot. So, so um, you saw a bumper a few seconds ago. And that bumper is for the new series that we were supposed to launch today. And you may be wondering, where is our lead pastor? <laughs> where is Pastor Randy? I've been wondering the same thing. I haven't seen him for, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> on Friday, I got a call from Pastor Randy confirming that he had tested positive for COVID. And so uh, he's doing great. I talked to him yesterday. He feels like he is sick and doesn't feel great. He's got kind of a Louis Armstrong thing going on with his voice. But um, he's doing fine. Most importantly, he is so sad that he couldn't be with us this morning to start this new series. Can you give me a wide angle real quick? Do you mind? Can we just tell Pastor, put your hands up and say, we love you, Pastor Randy. Tell him how much you appreciate him, his gift. Well, there's a lot of people here. Look at that. That's fantastic. Chris, can you give me a little bit in the monitor if you don't mind, buddy? So after I talked to Pastor Randy, I began thinking about options for Sunday. We have a couple of options we were thinking about and Almost immediately, um, and I, I, don't, I don't hear the audible voice of God. That's not how this works. Uh, I, I wish that it was at times, but I don't. But I felt like God was saying, I want you to preach on Sunday. And those that know me know that I like to prep long in advance, and I like to kind of research and study, and, and that's, that's where my communication style comes from. Uh, as soon as that thought came to my head, I want you to preach on Sunday, I literally said out loud, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> and then I tried to move on with the other options. And you have some things you've done in the past when Pastor Amy was sick. And, and again, I felt like God dropped in my spirit. I want you to preach on Sunday. And what came through my mind again, out of my mouth was, no, I'm not doing it. Anybody else, be honest. You've argued with God before. You, you can be, just tell the truth. All right, this was one of those moments where I was arguing with God. And I'll be honest, I thought winning a fight with Jessica was dif difficult. This is a whole nother level of challenge. My mic is fighting me, Sir Chris. I'm sorry about that, buddy. Got to tether this for second service. But almost immediately after saying this, I felt like God dropped a passage in my heart. This has never happened. I've never had this experience happen, but I felt like God put a passage in my heart and then he dropped three points <laughs> in my heart. I texted one of our staff members and I said, would it be crazy to try to pull this together in a, in a day? And this is what I believe with all my heart. I believe that although we were all very caught off guard by this, that God wasn't caught off guard. He's not in heaven going, oh man, what am I gonna do with FCF? And I believe with confidence that God has a specific word for us this morning. I haven't taught from this passage in 20 years since I just had just come out of Bible college. Like, oh, he had this in the hopper. I really wish that I had this in the hopper. But I feel like God spoke to me. And if you're in the sound of my voice, whether you're in this room or you're watching online, I just want to encourage you that God wants to speak to you today. I believe this is for this very this very moment, God wasn't caught off guard. Either God has a specific word for you this morning or Pastor Randy is faking sick because I th he thinks I could use the practice. Either way, I'm gonna be speaking this morning. So I would also be remiss if I didn't thank two of our team members who were incredible. When, when I decided I was gonna do this, um, I called two people. One of them is Miss Faith Greathouse, who's been on staff with us, and Faith is amazing. She was getting ready to start her growth group in Pennsylvania, got in her car, and drove down here to help do the slides. Can you let Faith know how much you appreciate her? And Matt, they're a blessing. 
And then my man Joshua, who is, helps me with almost every message that I preach, don't call him Josh, he doesn't like that. He's normally a docile guy, but call him Josh and it gets crazy. So Joshua, I love you. Let Joshua know we were here for hours last night. Turn with me to Matthew 14, verse 22. Some of you are familiar with this passage. This is coming out of the feeding of the 5,000. Verse 22 says, Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountain by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. Verse 24, And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against, another translation says it hit a, a contrary wind. Ever going through life and you hit a contrary wind. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the water, on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Phantasma is the Greek word here, so we get the word phantom from. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Man, I love Peter. <laughs> one response, one word. Come, he said. And then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of faith, he said, why did you doubt? Now, I want to look at this passage from a different perspective. I love Peter. Peter, um, Peter was constantly making mistakes. He, he, he talked too much. He was headstrong. Um, but he never let his shortcomings prevent him from trying just about anything. And I want to be careful here, but I think it's safe to say that Peter had a little crazy in him. I mean, he was a little bit wild. Peter's the only person in Scripture that I can find that's been rebuked by all three separate persons of the Godhead. I mean, that's quite an accomplishment. He was rebuked by the Father on the Mount of Transfiguration. He was rebuked by the Holy Spirit in Acts 6. And Jesus... Well, he was always rebuking Peter. <laughs> At one point, Roman soldiers come to the Garden of Gethsemane to take Jesus. And Peter snaps. He pulls his sword and chops a guard's ear off. I don't think he was aiming for the ear, though. You know what I'm saying? I think <laughs> Peter was a wild man. Anybody know somebody? They love Jesus, but they're a little bit crazy. I mean, you can, yeah. Well, somebody pointed at me. Don't do that. That's not... <laughs> I've always heard this story preached from Peter did this wrong and Peter did that wrong and Peter didn't have faith and Peter, he just took his eyes off Jesus. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. It frustrates me because we always view people through the lens of their failure. And this morning, we're gonna come from another perspective. We're gonna look at three things that Peter did right. We're, we're not going to look at him through the lens of his failure. We're going to look at him through his successes. So this story comes out of the feeding of the 5,000. And the disciples, I mean, they're pumped up. I mean, this incredible miracle has just taken place. And I, I imagine that the crowd is in complete awe. And the disciples, I mean, they're, they're juiced, right? I mean, this is just... You know, it, baptism service just ended, right? They're like, woo! They're ready to take on the gates of hell with a water pistol, just. <laughs> and I just picture the disciples, they're like signing autographs. It's James, I got a book coming, you're gonna like it, get on Amazon. <laughs> Peter's like, I'm gonna write two books. <laughs> and it says that, that Jesus immediately made them before the crowd is even gone, Jesus makes them get in the boat. Another translation says he, he compelled them. NKJV says he constrained them. It's so crazy. You can picture this all playing out. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. Get in the boat. 
I want you to go to the other side. The disciples are like, all right, we'll see you, Jesus, from the mountaintop. They're high as you get. And he puts them on a boat and sends them straight into a contrary wind, straight into a storm. Let's look. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Verse 28, Peter, I love Peter. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Now this word, if, wherever it is here, this word can also be translated that or since. This wasn't a question. Peter knew that it was God or he wouldn't have asked for a miracle from Jesus. He knew it was him. How did he know it was him? This is the first thing Peter did right. He recognized God's voice. In the middle of everything else that's going on, he recognized God's voice. And in all the accounts, Peter is the only person that responds. I just picture all the disciples freaked out it's a phantom, it's a ghost. And they run to the back of the boat and Peter comes to the front. He's like, what you doing, Jesus? Can I, can I? He knew God's voice because he was in relationship with him. He spent time with him. Peter had his problems but Peter's ears were tuned to the voice of Jesus. Does anybody have a Bible with you? I know most of us carry on their phone. Do you have a Bible, Dan? Can you pass that to me real quick? Pass that to me real quick. And you, you may think, you know, Pete, this, this sounds like super spiritual. Like, okay, okay, gr great. Hear the voice of Jesus. <laughs> How could he hear the voice? Because he was tuned to it. Matthew 10, 27 says it this way. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the rooftops. Is your ear tuned enough to Jesus that you can hear him whisper? Could you recognize God's voice in a storm? Because with all of Peter's shortcomings, he could. And we live in a loud world that's constantly struggling to get our attention. It's constantly speaking into us. Can you still hear God's voice? And maybe you'd say, okay, this sounds like super spiritual. Again, like I don't, like you pastors, the way you talk, like hear God's voice. Like they, Pastor Pete, they lived with Jesus. They ate with him. They fished with him. They spent time with him. Of course they recognized his voice. I'm living 2,000 years later. How is it possible that I would have any way to hear the voice of Jesus? H how is it possible that I would have the ability to hear the voice of Jesus? The voice of God can be clearly heard speaking through the pages of the Bible. This book is his voice. And if you don't hear anything else I say, hear me when I say this. If you find yourself in a storm, listen for his voice. He wants to speak to you. And some of you, I need a bottle of water. Oh, there's one in here. Some of you can relate to this. Some of you can relate to the fact that in the middle of a storm, you got one word from God, one verse, one passage, and it sustained you through that storm. It brought peace. It brought comfort. One word from the voice of God. Amen. How did Peter have the incredible faith to take this step? I mean, how did he do it? Like, think about it. How did he do it? And this is what I landed on. Peter didn't see it as standing on the water. He literally felt like he was standing on God's word. Come. And this has to be our anchor. His word is his voice. And his voice is enough. This is the standard by which we live. This, this is how we build our theology. I remember, uh, it was a few months ago, 
I was following a service, and I, w- I was in Guest Central with, with my wife, and families were coming through, and one of the last couples that came through, probably the easiest way to say it is that they disagreed with our view of Christian sexuality. They, 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 they disagreed with our stance, and we teach what the Word of God teaches. Remember, in that conversation, it didn't get hostile, but it, it did get, I'm going to use the word direct, because <laughs> she said, well, I'm just going to tell you, it feels right to me. And I, I looked and smiled and was kind and, and just squeezed my hand. <laughs> and I said, we don't build our theology on feelings. And she said, well, well, what do you build your theology on? And from where I was standing in that room, I could see the blue spine of one of the NIV Bibles that's in the back of most of these chairs. And I pointed and I said, that book is the standard by which we live and the content by which we teach. When everything else is shaking, when everything else is moving, that word is truth. It is God's voice to us. It brings safety. It brings comfort. I remember our our security officer was like, (laughs) he was trying to pretend he wasn't paying attention, but my man was shaking. I said, that's truth. That's what we live by. And she looked me dead in the eyes and said, oh, you're one of those churches. I, I slawed right back at her. I said, yes, ma'am, we are. Yes, ma'am, we are. And what I want to encourage you, in this room, you know what we believe. But maybe you're watching online. And, and if your theology is being created by someone else, if someone is building your theology, you're not a part of a, I apologize, you're not a part of a church. You're a part of a cult. The Bible is the guide for a Christ follower. The Bible is the map. That's his voice. And Peter, in the middle of the storm, he could hear it. He could hear it. What did he do? He recognized God's voice. It's the second thing. Matthew 14, 28. Peter says, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus gives him one word. Come. Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water. He recognized God's voice. What's the second thing he did? He responded to God's instruction. He responded to God's instruction. One word, come. Peter did what he said. Peter was obedient. Oh, Christians come. Oh, God, give me a sign. He's like, you're killing me, Petey. I gave you my word. Look in the book. How many remember baptism? How many were at baptism service? How many were? It it was one of, I was honored, blessed to be a part of that incredible service. (laughs) So many stories, so many testimonies. If you weren't here, we baptized 73 people. Several of them were spontaneous. We ran out of everything. We had clothes, shorts, towels. I came back to get my clothing and someone had taken that and is wearing it. If... (laughs) I, if you have my clothing and my shorts and my boxers, bring them back to me, please. I like that Under Armour's comfortable, so I like those shorts. They're my favorite. They were pulling stuff out of the bookstore. They handed me a soaking wet towel. It was awesome. Pastor Randy is baptizing somebody. I've never seen it happen in my life, but he baptized them, and they flipped over and kicked him in the back of the head. And he, looked, he turned around, couldn't find where the person was. <laughs> It was amazing, so many testimonies. You'll hear some in the weeks to come. But a strange phenomenon always happens in baptism, and Pastor Randy and I, and I have joked about it since I've been here, since our first baptism service. Because what happens is we encourage people to get baptized, but we don't force anybody. We, we, we encourage what Scripture teaches, but we don't force you to. But a strange phenomenon happens when people get in the tank. It happened twice to me. Go back and watch the video. It's hilarious. You go to baptize somebody, and the back of their head hits the water. And I'm not sure why it happens. I have theories. Uh, Self-preservation, maybe, or loss of control. Maybe they don't trust the person that's baptizing them. That could be 
what it is, but they lock their core up, and all of a sudden, they don't want to go down. Now, if you're the baptizee, you have, you have baptizer, you have two options. One is, is you fail. I mean, let's be honest, you're failing at, you had one job. Okay, people, you had one job, you blew it. And I feel like I'm going to fail if I don't. So you got, you got, you know, what I always go with is I'm going to get you under. <laughs> so if I got to go Zach Davis on you, I'm like, yeah, mixed martial, I'm going to put you under the water. If you tighten your core, I'm like Ivan Draga from Rocky IV. I must break you. Like I'm, <laughs> you're going under. I share that story because somehow we do the same thing spiritually. We say we're going to follow Christ. I'm going to do this your way. God, you're first in my life. And then self-preservation kicks in. No, no, God, I want to look out for number one. No, God, I, I don't want to give up control. I, I want to have control. I think this is better, which is the, the main issue. It's trust. You don't really trust. If you trust, you follow. Trust is demonstrated by following. Obedience is the mark of a Christ follower. We talked about it last week, and Pastor Randy did such an incredible job of teaching on that. I want you to never forget this passage. Hebrews 5.9. He, Christ, became the source of eternal salvation for all who, what's it say? Obey him. There's two pieces to this. There's two pieces. When you're first walking with Christ, when learning to walk with God, he calls us to steps of obedience. That's what we just finished. That's, Hebrews 6 calls it the elementary teachings. I'm going to move past beyond the elementary teachings. That's when you're learning to walk with God. But as we mature, he calls us to take steps of faith. You got to get out of the boat. You, you got to take a step that's beyond your comfort zone. The mission of FCF Church, we exist to help people reach their full redemptive potential in Christ. That's why FCF exists, to help people reach their full redemptive potential. Do you know why some people don't reach their full redemptive potential? Because they never get out of the boat. They, they never take that step. I'll say it another way. Take the step. Because a wet Pete is better than a dry Thomas. See what I did there? How did we end up with such a safe theology from dangerous faith? We live as if our goal is to arrive safely at death. Living outside God's will is dangerous. Taking steps of faith within God's will makes you dangerous. For Pastor Randy to say, you know what? I'm going to plant a church called FCF. I'm going to take a step of faith. That's, man, hell shakes when it hears that story. You're like, I'm going to start a business, and as God blesses my business, I'm going to empower my church to reach farther than they ever have before financially. I'm going to use my business to reach everybody around me that I can for Christ. That's a step of faith. Makes you dangerous. First thing he did is he recognized God's voice. The second thing he did is he responded to God's instruction. Peter got down out of the boat, verse 29, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. Fear makes you do really, really silly things. You ever look back at a decision that you made in fear? And go, what was I thinking? Look back at, at something maybe that you said when you were afraid and you think, good gracious, what was I doing? Do you know what Peter said? This is hilarious. Think about it. Peter goes, it's a little windy to walk on water today. 
I mean, if the weather was nice, I think I'd be all right. But I mean, there's wind and it's splashing. But I love what he does. He blows it. But he recognizes God's voice. He responded to God's instruction. And then he reached for God's help. He calls, Lord, save. Jesus reaches out for him. He reaches for God's help. He doesn't swim for the boat. He knew his solution was not going to be found in the boat. And there may be times where, I mean, I don't believe it, but some believe there's times for long prayers. Oh, Heavenly Father, I beseech thee now in my hour of need. Thine art the Lord of the storm, whilst I am in right now. Christ is my firm foundation. No. What's he say? Lord, save me. Lord, save me. <laughs> Beginning to sink, he says, Lord, save me. Again, I, I hate the fact that every time I see a picture of Peter, he's not walking on the water. He's sinking. And now there's a picture that's really popular where, where Peter is underwater, like bloop, 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 bubbles are coming up, but he's reaching. It's not what it says. He realized, oh man, I blew it. And he reaches out for Jesus. He calls for him. Jesus grabs his hand. I, lo I, love, I love that it says that, reach, that Jesus reaches and grabs his hand. I just see this picture in my head. Even if you're far from God, he can always reach you. You are never beyond the grasp of your heavenly father. You are never beyond his grasp. You're never too far away. Simple phrase you've probably heard before is that failure isn't final. Man, he still has things for you. He still wants to use you. Verse 31, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And initially in reading this passage, I think most people arrive at the conclusion that I arrived at is that Peter was doubting Jesus, but Jesus wasn't sinking. Peter doubted himself. And I'm not, I'm not good enough. I don't know that I can do this. I'm embarrassed I'm going to get on a stage in front of my entire church with a day's notice and humiliate myself with a message. Hypothetically, of course. <laughs> You're enough. You're enough. And maybe you're new to faith. And you're not, <laughs> you're not questioning yourself. You are questioning God. You're thinking, God, I've failed so many times. There, there's nothing about me that you would want. Man, he loves you, and you're never too far from his reach. You're never too far for him to get to you. And I love that I get to serve at a church, FCF, that is uniquely equipped to serve people that have questions about God. Don't you love that about our church now Pastor Randy teaches? Man, I love that. Every single Thursday, guess what we do? We answer questions. Don't ever stop asking questions. Don't ever stop asking questions. Peter recognized God's voice. He responded to God's instruction and he reached for God's help. I'm going to wreck some people's theology as I close here. Because there's a, there's a theology out there that says, you know, if you just give your life to Jesus and everything is going to be great, You'll just run through meadows, and birds will fly, butterflies land. You'll hold hands with Jesus and spin. <laughs> I believe that the way of Jesus is best, but, but that's not what Scripture teaches. You can try to cherry pick some verses and make it say that, but he also says, in this world, you will face trials, but take heart, because I've overcome the world. Jesus... <laughs> He puts them on a boat and sends them straight into a storm. 
How's your theology process that? And maybe you're questioning. You're like, man, I, God's mad at me. I messed up. I have failed, and this is his punishment on me. And if you've made mistakes, get right. Don't blame God for the dumb mistakes that we've made. I've made some. But today, if you find yourself in a storm, what God wants me to tell you is to do what Peter did. Recognize God's voice. Listen for his voice. His voice is found in his word, and one word from God will change you. Respond to his instruction. Do what it says. Be obedient to the call he has. Sometimes he's calling you to take a step of obedience. He's always calling you to take a step of obedience. Sometimes he's calling you to take a step of faith. And a lot of people have still not recovered from COVID. Nobody knows it, but you're a wreck inside. Instead of being like a, a, a three, anxiety-wise, you live at a nine. You're in constant fear, constant anxiety. And listen, you, you got to reach out for help. And you can reach out to God. It's a good step. But listen, reach out to your church. Pastor Chris and her team in care ministries are incredible. They'll meet with you. They'll help you. They'll serve you. Reach out for help. The devil wants to isolate you. And so what we do when we're in these moments, we let shame and embarrassment pull us completely away from everything else. And we get worse, and we get worse, and we get worse. And we feel alone, and we're anxious, and the cycle goes round and round. Recognize God's voice. Respond to God's instruction. And reach for God's help. I'll close with this. I'm going to ask you to stand, stand to your feet if you don't mind. The way we teach now, my wife, my wife teaches our kids. Shout out to the Grace and Glory homeschool group. Yeah, you got the rest of my couple of you in here. <laughs> and what they do is they teach the kids and, and then they give the kids a test. That's how it works in school too, right? You get a lesson and then you get a test. But in life... You ready for it? Sometimes the lesson is in the test. Sometimes you're not learning until you're right in the middle of that storm. But we need to do what Peter did. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I pray that we would be so sensitive to your voice that we can hear you. That we can hear what you want to say at a whisper. God, I pray... I pray that when you give us instruction, we would follow it in obedience. God, I pray that those that are struggling would reach out for help and they would find it in you and in the body of Christ. God, we thank you that you are faithful. You are our firm foundation, a rock on which we can build our life, as your word says. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Everyone said? We're just going to sing this one more time. Christ is my firm foundation. Well, sing it with us. The rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. Oh, I'll never be. Put my trust in Jesus. Because I put my faith in Jesus. He'll never let me down. He fail now. So I would Yes. Come on, sing rains come. Come on, sing this with us. Rains come. my house Sing that again, church. Rains came.
Can we thank Pastor Pete for that message this morning on very short notice? Thank you. And thank you all for joining us for part of your Sunday. If you'd like for someone to talk to or someone to pray with you, we have uh, Care Central over here on this side of the auditorium. Pastor Pete and his lovely wife Jess will be in uh, Guest Central for anyone that's their first time here and would like to meet them. Uh, thank you so much. If you were baptized last week, the photos of your baptism are at this website. Actually, anyone can go to it and see the photos, but you can get your photos there if the guys would leave it up for a bit so folks can write it down. If you don't get it written down, you can always call the church office and get it. Thank you very much. Have a great Sunday and a great week.